Lexi. I just wanted to make a video today because one of you, my crew members, asked me how did I actually know I am a light worker? And this inspired me to create a video where I talk about occult personality types, not only my own, but also the other ones I've been doing some research on. The first group I would like to tackle is the Starseed group. This is a relatively new group that um, was brought to my attention. I did not know so much about star seeds, I, I generally have to say, but I've been doing some research and I was really impressed to find out star seeds could have been, in the beginning, they could have been crystal children that grew up into becoming star seeds, or they could actually, let me just put this here, <laughs> it's very DIY, right? Um, or they could actually create crystal children. So they either were crystal children or they are giving birth to crystal children at the moment. Star seeds are people or souls more likely that find it very difficult to be here on earth. They really feel at home in their body. They don't really feel that they can fit very well into the surrounding environments because apparently earth is not really their home. They come from a different planet. Their soul comes from a different planet. These are not people that have been through current incarnations to complete some sort of karma here on earth, but these are people that have descended from above, from a different constellation. And this is considered to be the Pleiades. So apparently the home of the star seeds is the Pleiades. What is the Pleiades? Well, the Pleiades is one of the constellations in the sky. It happens to be a cluster of planets in the constellation of Taurus, the cluster of stars that is the most visible with the eye from many different points on Earth. And it's one of the most beautiful as well. It's considered to be the Seven Sisters and um, it has some really interesting links with mythological stories, especially the ones coming from ancient Greece. They are considered to be the seven daughters of Atlas, one of the founding titans of Earth and life here on Earth. But we don't know where the titans come from. They could come from another planet as well. So there you go. <laughs> Star seeds are souls that have incarnated here on earth to try to bring us some divine knowledge or some knowledge from the outer realm. Some knowledge that could also help us balance out our egos here on earth and try to give us an understanding that perhaps the ways in which we just use our logic and our reason are limited. We need to expand, we need to see beyond. And these children that grew up into being adults that feel as if they're not at home in their bodies, that feel as if they're misunderstood by society, that they're very different, very awkward, they're forward thinkers, they're very original thinkers as well, intuitive healers. These are members that society kind of outcasts, kind of labels as being weird or wrong or bad, but they are not. They are just beings from another planet, literally, like their souls are incarnated into this body. And they come from one of the most beautiful cluster of stars, the Pleiades, that is very close to the Earth. Knowledge of these star seeds comes from the seers, ancient forefathers and foremothers that have managed to tap into what we call the Akashic records, right? Akasha. This is, by the way, I'm using cards from the, I don't have it here with me, but it's the Work Your Light deck from Rebecca Campbell. Beautiful deck. The Akashic records are very similar to historical records. So as archaeologists and anthropologists like to collect the various customs and material objects, well, the Akashic records are like the spiritual treasure trove, the dictionaries of our humanity. It's a container for all of the um, curses, blessings, intentions, our spiritual our moments of collective spiritual awakenings that happen between bodies and souls as we were evolving and spiritually developing. People that have done some work and that have tuned into this Akashic Records found a lot of really interesting knowledge regarding star seeds and crystal children and how they came into being from the Pleiades. If you feel that you are not really at home in your body, that you would like to be someplace else, not on earth. So I'm not talking about the longing that you have when you are, for example, residing in India, you were born in India, let's say, and you're longing to live somewhere in France. No, that's not, that's not the case here. This is about you were born on this earth and you find humanity, you find everything that has to do with being human, very strange, very awkward. You don't feel at home in your body. You would like to be in another body. You feel that gender identity is stifling. It doesn't represent you. You are a star seed, okay? So this is 
You are a crystal child that grew into a star seed and you might also bring, bring into this world if you decide to procreate other crystal children. The second group, this is the one I identify with, light workers. Light workers are not beings that they just like the sunlight and they really like putting fairy lights everywhere because they think the fairy lights are awesome, you know. No, darlings, it's not like that. It's not as superficial as that. Um, it would be great if it would be, but it's tougher than that. So I found out I am a light worker because I went through a really dark night of the soul. I've been tested in the last eight years in a variety of different situations. You wake up to the realization that you're a light worker when you have met the deepest darkness within yourself and within other people around you. For me, it was literally a dark situation because I had my soul awakening to the idea that I'm a light worker when I was in Scotland. And Scotland, if you guys know, it's in itself the realm of a number of spiritual witchiness and occult and, oh God, it's such a beautiful, beautiful region. The winds of change are constantly traveling through that land. No wonder that Shakespeare situated Macbeth, one of its strongest, most occult play in Scotland, okay? There's a reason for that. But when I was there, I could definitely feel the witchy uh, souls kind of pushing me into this awakening. The awakening basically happened because of my interaction with other people. I was many times in situations where people discarded me, used me, um, threw me out uh, of their homes. Um, there were situations when my power and my boundary, my boundaries were constantly crossed. My power was constantly being uh, pushed to the ground, more or less, you know. I was in very, very dark situations. I went through a divorce. Um, I barely had some money to support myself. I had to find ways to survive. I had to find ways to thrive. My body got sick so, so often. I was in situations where I had to go to work, but I couldn't because I was sick. So it was really intense survival moments. You come to a point when all of this darkness comes around you and wants to seep into you so badly that you either have a moment when you just give in and you say, I want to let this overcome me, fuck it, you know, and you give in to the darkness completely, or you have this moment of extreme power. It's almost like a Pluto moment where you just realize, no, <laughs> enough is enough. This is my limit. I'm going to push back. And I'm going to push back with love. And this is the moment where you awaken as a light worker. So everyone that has made you feel bad, awful, has taken something away from you, that has tried to abuse you, that has devalued you, taken your self-worth away. It's like you push all of that energy backwards. And as I'm saying this, I just feel all this power cursing through me again. You push all of this energy backwards, but you don't do it to get revenge. You do it because you don't want to be in the darkness. You don't want the darkness to be part of you. So you rise up and you rise up with love. You rise up by taking care of yourself, by loving yourself. And it's almost as if you start radiating this energy. I don't even know how to describe it. It's a bit difficult to put into words, but it's almost as if every day you wake up and it's a commitment to go towards the light, to let light infiltrate you. And... From that moment onwards, I felt as if also light sources started appearing in my surrounding environment. It happened many times that I was at a traffic light and it, if a light was flickering, it started illuminating brightly. Or um, I was walking down the streets and fairy lights started blinking all of a sudden. I know that some people could consider that these are coincidences that maybe just somebody, you know, clicked a switch somewhere. But... It, it's a bit strange when these things tend to add up and they happen especially in moments when you're making this inner commitment and this intention, I'm not going to fight back with violence, I'm not going to push back with hurt, I'm going to love, I'm going to self-love, I'm going to um, nurture and protect and just push back the energy, draw the boundaries around me, but not in a violent way, but in a way in which I show I care about others, I care about myself, and I will not be defeated by the dark, no matter how strong it is. No, 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 no. <laughs> being a light worker means being stubborn as F. And it means that you've seen the darkness, you faced it, okay? It was all around you. It was trying to get you to self-harm. It was trying to get you to use alcohol, drugs, 
really tough things to just numb yourself, to kill yourself, literally. It was trying to basically kick you out of life. So you might have contemplated suicidal thoughts, but then you shifted this and you decided, no, <laughs> this is not going to be my reality, okay? I will not be pushed to the ground. Enough is enough. So there is a reason why it is called light worker, right? And not light rester, light dreamer, light fairy. You have to do the work and the work is really strong. I have to tell you guys, it's not easy being a light worker because you basically have to transmute the darkness all the time. Once you had your awakening as a light worker, it's not just that you have to work on yourself to fight the darkness at any point, to fight toxic people and toxicity in other people. Because basically people are not toxic. I think that each and every one of us is born into this world very kind and pure and good. But we become toxic because of the things that we allow. You have to start doing the work for other people. So once your light starts shining so brightly and once you start manifesting a life of more light, of abundance, of prosperity, of joy, of understanding, then your light shines brighter, brighter, brighter and you get to attract all sorts of entities towards you. That's why you need strong boundaries because you need to realize and discern. Use your thinking, logical, analytical mind to try to discern is this something dark or is this something of the light? Is this something that needs my help or is this something I could just put to the side for the time being and allow itself to grow, allow itself to heal? As a light worker, then you have to start doing this light work service to others, right? You're going to start working in the service of others to try to help others figure out and understand their light and to unleash it, to help it grow. So this is light worker. You are a worker. You are brought here to be in the service of humanity. You are deeply incarnated here on earth several lifetimes. Light workers are also considered to be earth angels, okay? But that sounds a little bit too magnanimous. I prefer the term light worker because it's a bit more pragmatic. You know, it's a bit about working towards bringing more light into people's life, literally or metaphorically. The difference between star seeds and light workers, to my mind, is that light workers are a bit more empathetic. Light workers were initially indigo children or they give birth to indigo children in this lifetime. Indigo children are very willful but they are very empathetic at the same time so they feel as if they feel a lot of this deep connection with animals with the surrounding environment around them. The difference again between light workers and star seeds is that light workers feel very grounded into the earth. They feel as if they're part of the earth. Gaia vibrates on the same level with them. So they are being brought to solve and work through very deep, dark ancestral karma several lifetimes so that they can bring more light into this and even more light and purge the ancestral lifetime. One of us is working in the service of humanity because they are part of the humanity, but more like an enlightened part of humanity. And the other half of us, sorry, I wanted to put the star seeds. The other half of us, the star seeds, are not from Earth. They are from another constellation, from another galaxy, potentially. And they are here to try to help illuminate us, but mostly from an intellectual cognitive framework to help push us progress, not from an empathetic Earth-bound level, but more from a highly crown chakra attuned spiritual intellectual level, if that makes sense. I want to talk about witches <laughs> okay so our third occult personality type the witch or the warlock okay if you are male you noticed i did not mention any genders with uh, light workers or star seeds this is because light workers and star seeds are souls that came into this incarnation with the pluto and libra generations the moment when Pluto, the planet of transformation, entered into a massive collective awakening into the second half of the zodiac. So the signs from Libra to Pisces represent the second half of the zodiac. This is not about I and ego, like the first part of the zodiac, the signs from Aries to Virgo. The signs from Libra to Pisces deal with we, so a collective mass awakening. And every generation born from Pluto in Libra onwards is a generation that is basically bringing new knowledge here on Earth. We are redefining what it means to be human, what it means to work, what it means to give birth, how we are using the resources here on Earth. The generation right before Pluto in Libra, so the transitioning generation, Pluto in Virgo, 
mostly represents the connection to nature. And these are final generation of witches and warlocks. These are the people that basically gave birth to the light workers, to the star seeds. These are the ones that because Pluto was in the sign of Virgo, so the sign that deals with medicine, the sign that deals with plant based healing, with um, sensitivity, like neural sensitivity. The Witches um, and warlocks are basically, warlocks are kind of not coming out, so I'm not like, there are a lot of men that kind of have had these feelings that have had this kind of occult knowledge of healing others, of uh, supporting them, of bringing them back to life and so on and so forth. Um, but, you know, it's considered unmanly to be into these kind of things and it's been reviled for so many centuries. So I can understand why men still lie in hiding. But witches, we know more about them. These are very earthly bound spiritual women who have been holding us together spiritually since possibly ancient Egypt. It's very hard to trace back their lineage because it's been very hidden. Occult knowledge has been handed down from mother to daughter across various generations. It has been hidden because it was persecuted. We don't really, we can't really trace it that back unless we actually go back to the Akashic records, which were mostly created by witches, right? Through their knowledge of helping other people, of casting spells on them. There are two types of witches dark and light witches, right? Light witches are those that heal, protect, and bring back to life. They nurse people, they take care, they bring babies into this world. Um, they provide comfort in times of need. Um, while dark witches are the ones that manipulate energy in order to achieve certain outcomes, such as they cast spells of magic to bind someone to somebody else. They are the ones that pr project curses on other people to get them to do things. They are the ones that send all sorts of dark omens to other people. So. Be very careful with witch energy. You have to find out. Use your gut instinct when you are around the witch or when you go and visit one. Is this a light witch or is it a dark witch? What kind of spirits are they working with? What kind of entities are they summoning? Because dark witches are also as powerful as light witches and as effective. So they could choose to summon deities that are connected to the devil or Beelzebub or whatever toxic kind of situations, right? Where people are bound together through karma, where karma is heavily played out and created again. Light witches are more into dharma, into helping people reach their own conclusion, come up to their own moments of empowerment. Basically, they're freeing people. They're freeing people of the karma, right? They are helping them get rebirth themselves. They are helping them go through phoenix-like moment, okay? So there's a strong connection there between having strong Pluto placements in your birth chart and being a witch. You could have a lot of planets in the 8th house and 12th house. You could have a very strong Pluto on the Ascendant, Pluto in the 7th, Pluto in the 10th or in the 4th. Um, very strong Scorpio energy in your chart or links to Scorpio, Pluto conjunct your Sun, Pluto conjunct your Venus, a cluster of planets, what we call as astrologers, the stellium in your 8th house and then in your 12th house. Light witch and dark witches. The witches are, to my mind, the mothers of the light workers and the star seeds. Don't get me wrong, if you want to call yourself a witch, that's fine, that's okay. But I do feel like the soul imprint is slightly different. Most of us right now who consider ourselves to be witches are actually light workers or star seeds. There has been another shift of energy with what the Mayans call the 2012 portal. I've been having very interesting conversations with a lot of you about uh, the fact that you are having some sort of extrasensorial premonitions. You are able to see the future before it actually happens. You are able to foretell very quickly your grades or the results of your exams. You are able to figure out through dreams what is going to happen. You are able to foretell situations such as the one we are currently living in, like an epidemic. I feel this is a particular trait of the Pluto in Sagittarius and Pluto in Capricorn generations. These are already generations, they're just growing up, so we're kind of figuring out how these children are adapting to the environment here on Earth. But I feel especially with Pluto and Sagittarius who are reaching the age of maturity at the moment, they're in their 20s, these are these people are awakening to the fact that they are incredible manifestors. Imagine having Pluto, the planet of awakening and transformation, in the sign of God, Jupiter, good luck, manifestation, bringing forth anything. Anything you think, instantly materialize. Anything you feel, 
instantly materialize. So this means that you have you need to have such a big control over what it is you think and what it is you feel and what it is you speak, okay? And try to veer the energy towards a direction that can benefit us all because it could have a ping-back effect that it might come back towards you and it might actually give you some sort of spiritual sickness. I think that this final group of people is called the Oracle. And I, I actually got inspired by the Oracle of Delphi. Uh, Delphi was considered to be the little uh, belly of the world. And a lot of really important sacral chakra knowledge was emerging from that uh, center. So Delphi is basically a place in Greece. Um, it has some sort of like really beautiful ancient ruins, constructions, uh, where people used to go and pray and ask for advice and connect to the higher realm. And I do feel that this is very symbolic and very interesting as a metaphor for those of you that are feeling as if you can intuit already what's going to happen. I would say don't be afraid of these capacities. On the contrary, please, please, please work on enhancing them. One way in which you can enhance these capacities is first of all to accept them. So don't be afraid of them. Allow them to come into you. Allow them to transform you. If you have dreams in which you imagine already different worlds, write them down. Okay, record them somehow. Develop a platform where you get to talk to people about these things and you get to connect with like-minded spirits. You're always welcomed on my channel. Okay, I highly encourage you to tune into my channel. Leave comments. I accept you, okay? I'm actually really excited about this new group of spiritual beings. If you have precognition abilities, if you have clear audience, clear sentience, clear vision, please, please work on enhancing that. Don't be afraid of them. You are not insane. You are just ushering in the age of Aquarius. And it will be knowledge that we might need in the future in order to actually connect to alternative universes, in order to manifest really interesting ideas and really interesting projects and to bring into beings uh, devices that could potentially save people's lives. So it's really important that you tune into that wealth of imagination and extrasensorial capacities at the moment. I do hope that this video made sense. Let me know if you'd like me to expand more on this knowledge of oracles. You shouldn't be afraid of your capacities. On the contrary, work on developing them. If other people in your environment don't understand you, connect, share yourself in other ways. We have social media, we have the internet, this fantastic invention, right? Um, that was brought about with Pluto and Libra. So please, please, please use it, okay? Use it. We have it for a reason. We have it to connect to each other. I don't think that these are times of social distancing in any way. These are times of social connection, deeper than we ever had before. We're connecting from all parts of the world. So if you want to do some reading about occult knowledge and occult subjects in this period to try to even connect deeper with whom you really are, I hope I can inspire you to do some of um, this research on your own as well. I wish you all the best. Take care. Lots of love and light. I'll see you in the next one. Mwah.